Uh, everybody can hear me? So, hi, I'm François Stepani. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is Mespion. It's a software I developed as part of my master thesis in Monsignor University in Belgium, uh, under the supervision of Tom Benz and Tudor Gilbert. So I'm now working for Agilitic. It's a company I co-founded three weeks ago, so quite recent. So, Mespion. We all know software development, we are all software developers, and we know that software development involves a lot of technical skills, but not only. We also need to be able to communicate, because when a project becomes big, developers have to communicate, and it's a very, very hard part, I think. So we will focus on this aspect of software development, not technical one, but communication one. Um, so, our goal is to understand the dynamics and the organization of open source communities. Because often open source communities are spread around the world and communication can be hard. So we we'll try to get a better insight of how it works. So, we all know that open source projects always use mailing lists or very often use mailing lists. Why? Because it's pervasive, everybody knows it, and everybody can use emails, at least software developers can use email. Uh, they are persistent, you can get archives on, on the website, so for example with Nabbers or Google Groups, you can have all the email history and it's always there. It's not like an IRC channel that is not logged, so you have complete history. And also in mailing lists, it's often the main official communication channels for the open source project. So that's where important decisions are taken. So if you take Squeak or Faro, for example, a lot of decisions are taken in the mailing list. So that's a good channel of communication. You can get a lot of information from there. And you can also get a lot of information from version control systems. So I guess everybody knows how it works. So developers commits code and can update their local version of the code. So it's a very important collaborative tool in software development. So that's also a very good source of information. We can probably get a lot from this. So our idea was to combine the two sources, the mailing list and the software repository, and combine them to get information about how developers are working. So we developed Mespion, so it's a uh, word name. Mespion is for May for email, and an, es an espion in French is a spy, so that's a nice name, and I could put a James Bond picture, so that, that's the best name. Uh, it's developed on top of Moves. Uh, I don't know if who knows Moves here? Yeah. Sure. So Moves is a software analysis platform, if I don't say anything wrong, Stefan. <laughs> okay, so we developed Mespion on top of Moose to take advantage of, of what of the available tools within Moose. So how does it look like? So we have the repository version control information and the mailing list and we want to merge information to know who is who in the mailing list and in the version control repository. So we have email users and repository users and we want to merge them under user identity so we know who is committing code and who is sending emails in the, in the mailing list. So we have a bridge and that contains user identities and so we can track the action of everybody. Um, at the moment, Mespion can import data from CBS repositories and Subversion repositories. And we can also get information from Store repositories. Store is the VisualWorks version control tool. So we can get information from these three repositories. And the mailing lists are imported with Mailman. Mailman is a very, very common tool in open source, open source communities. 
it's a software that can handle your mailing list and generate a web interface to it. And many projects use it. Python, for example, Squeak, Faro. Uh, there are many, many open source software using this. So we decided to, to go this way. That's the best, the best way to import data from open source. So for my master thesis, I, I, I analyzed three open source projects. They are quite different in many ways. Uh, we analyzed Moose, Drupal, and Python. Moose is written in Smalltalk. Drupal is written in PHP, it's a CMS system. And the Python programming language, which is written in C. So they all use different version control tools, so store, CDS, and CDS, NSDN for Python. The size is very different. For, and for Drupal, we only have eight committers in the repository, while for Python, we have 172 committers. So these projects are quite different, and we think that they represent quite well the open source world. So we decided to go for those three. Um, I will quickly show you Mespion. So those are some visualizations of, offered by Mespion. Uh, I will quickly show you some of them. Of course, not everything, because time is short. So I will open the most browser. I will explain a bit as not everybody knows it. So Moose Browser will let us browse our model. The model I showed you before, we can browse it with the Moose Browser. So I imported the Python dev <coughs> inside Moose. So we can see that we have all the user identities, so that's all the people we have detected. So if we click, we can, we can see everybody there. We have the, the mailing list with all email messages and threads. And we have the repository with all the commits. So, for example, for the repository, we can invoke the MESPION menu and get some visualization from this. So, I can take, for example, the only distribution case. So, this simple graph shows us when people commit in the, in the Python repository. So we have the time, so we 9, 1 a.m. until 11 p.m. And that's the average number of commits for, this, for each time slot. So we can see that Python community is quite active from 1 p.m. to 11. And we see that in the morning, we have a curve because people doesn't seem to work in the morning. <laughs> That's software developers, so they are often working in the evening. Um, what we have to we have to take a lot of care when we are dealing with this, because the hour of the commit, the timestamp of the commit, is based on the server. So. The server is maybe in the United States, but if you are a European developer, we are fucked up for this visualization. We are. So at the moment, we do not detect when people leave, but that should be possible with the mailing list. So by inferring information from the mailing list, we should be able to know where people are living, and we can get a better, um, more, more accurate picture for this. So that's to get the idea. So we have one big problem when you are dealing with two sources of information is to recognize people. So how can I know who is who? So for example, if I check, if you know Python a little bit, you should know that the um, the author of Python is Guido van Rossum, so that's this guy. So here I added two, two columns to my browser, who shows me the number of commits of each person and the number of emails that were sent by that person. So if I take Guido, I can see that he's actually, he had three different accounts 
in the repository. So sometimes it's used G van Rossum, Guido van Rossum, or Guido. So Mespion can detect in a certain measure uh, who is who. So he detected automatically that those three guys were the same. And that's the same for email user. We see that Guido used 11 different emails. So you can, he's quite active. And when you are dealing with big communities, you have to detect this automatically. So, for example, for Guido, we see that he used 11 different email addresses. We can see when he did use this email address. So, for example, that's the repartition, the distribution of email. So, we see that he... Ooh, he mainly uses guide.python.org email address. So, we see the rectangle, the beginning of the rectangle is the first time he uses his email. And the end of the rectangle is the last time he sent an email with this. So we can see for Perl that Guido at Google.com was used once in 2008. And with this we can track when, where people are working. So for example, we knew that Guido worked at Beopen. It's a company. And we see that he stopped to use this email in 2000. So we can guess that he left this company in 2000. So it's always guesses, but we can get a better picture of this. Sometimes it's very clear. You can, see, you can really see um, uh, a pattern from this. You can see, oh, it's very separate. You can follow the, the career of a person. So we, we see that Guido did a lot of commits. So he did, he did 9,000 commits, while the second one did only 5,000. So we can guess Guido is maybe the only one who is pushing code in the repository. So we're going to check who is doing what. For example, see the distribution of, uh, of the committers. And here, we can see that Guido is responsible for 23% of the commits, and the vast majority, 51, no, no, not the vast majority, but the majority of the commits is done by other people than the four top guys. So that can give us a hint about the, the health of the project. If a lot of people are committing, it could mean that the project is, is sane, and that if Guido leaves, the community can continue to continue the project and that can give us an hint about the, the viability of a project. So, that's for some visualization. Um, we talked about user identities and we have to combine people. It's, it is done automatically, but sometimes you just cannot guess. So it's sometimes impossible to know that uh, Guido van Rossum at google.com is the same than then smallflower86 at gmail.com. You, you just don't know it. So, we developed a tool to deal with this. So that's a browser, a very small browser, that shows identities on the left and other identities on the right. And you can, you can merge Two identities, or you can, if you say that oh, this email address belongs to another people, you can just move around. So, for example, I take not take a send. So, yeah, he used three email addresses, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I know him, and I know that his books.com is the same guy. So, from here, you just cannot guess that as a books is the same than not take a send, but I know it, so I can merge the two and the identity is added. Or, if I know that as is not as at Probox, but is Martin Fassen as well, I can just move the email address. So, we have an automatic detection of identities, but you always have to double check with a tool like this to be sure that your identities are, are good. 
So that was some some playing with the with Mespion. Uh, it's very interactive. So if if you just want to browse and see how it works, you can quickly launch visualization on on people, see how they interact with others. That's that's very for exploratory to explore many lists and and version control systems. So that that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, I don't know if you have any question. So you can infer some uh, interesting things about people. I'm not sure they'd be happy about that. Yeah, you can follow everybody and see who's doing <laughs> what. So like where they were working and the kind of commits that they did. I can imagine that uh, people might be a bit upset. Yeah, probably, yeah. Just <laughs> so with the life of a spy, right? That's public data, so everybody's yeah, just true. behind it. Thank you.